Bear Bats, the NFL version is back. I'm your host, Chris LeBear. Felico along with our host, Jim Schwartz. Everyone's favorite gambling chat segment. We'll back later in the show with Sammy P and Will Hill. How was your week? NFL was fantastic. I had a great. I was I was four zero and one in in uh, contest picks. It was it was a great week. Uh, this weekend, I feel like uh, it's going to be a it's a rough slate, buddy. It oh, is a, it, is. it is a rough slate. This is a get one of those clothespins out. Yes, hold your nose, blindfold, cover your eyes, and just um, you're almost better off. Was it you that said let, with the Steelers Ravens game, bet the Steelers and don't watch it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I had the Steelers. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure in your household, though, you're watching that game, considering your wife is a big oh, Steelers no, fan. No, we did not watch oh, it. No, no, we did not watch it. My 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 sister and brother in law and nephew were at, were at the house. Okay. It came up Saturday when I was gone. So then, the, my sister got to, my wife got to watch me watch the end of the Miami debacle. Oh, good. Okay. College. I'm sure that went well. And we went out. We went out all day on, on, Sunday, on Sunday before they went home, and we actually caught the very end of the game okay. on like the red zone channel that so you, was on at the restaurant we so were you saw lunch. the best part of the game because yes. it, was, it was ugly for like exactly. 55 minutes yeah. this is a good weekend if your significant other wants to go apple picking throw the pumpkin yep. patch like do the, like i have family photos this weekend it just happened to work out this weekend during nfl sunday that like we have to take pictures but it's a great weekend to do it because these games there is not one game and I'm, i'll watch all of them because i love watching football i'm never gonna turn an opportunity but like there's not a game where i'm like man Got to watch that one this weekend. Is like, is there one game bear where you're like, this game will determine seating. This game will determine anything of importance in the National Football League that you care about. Like Jacksonville, Indianapolis. I mean, theory, right, could help determine the South. Would, but like, you really think the Colts are gonna threaten to win that division now? Though? No, not without Anthony Richardson. And Gardner Mitchell used up sort of his one like luck game against the Ravens two weeks ago, right? Like, where is there a game where you're like, man, this this is gonna matter? In the end, well, I think uh, just sheer being a sheer masochist, I, I think you can watch the the Cowboys, Chargers, mm. or Patriots, Raiders if you just want to torture yourself and just laugh at ineptitude and stupid discussion decisions. Yeah, and Giants are back on prime time. That's oh, always, I, I, that's I'm sorry. Fun well, when I that. saw that, I, I I literally screamed at the top. I I, I dropped. I said they uh, have one more prime time game. I believe. I think the Jets have like three more, don't they? It might be Giants Jets in prime time because oh. they do play each other in a couple weekends. So, Terrific. Um, but yeah, it's it's a rough slate. But in these in these windows though, of these these opportunities, there's a lot of of money to be made with just as you mentioned, like you hold your nose and you wager on these games. And there's a lot of stinky dogs this weekend. There's some great dogs this weekend. It's a, it feels very dog weekend. And, yeah, and if you got ahead of some of the weather forecasts and hopped in on some of these totals and gone under. Like I, I like a lot of people have because these totals have dropped like yes. a rock uh, over the course of the week. So you're probably too late to to get in now. Maybe you just have to kind of watch, hope, hope yeah. for an early score. Maybe you get a little bit of an inflated number, and then it's an opportunity to, to jump in live and go under. There's a lot of teaser legs we talk about in the gambling yep. group chat in in a few minutes. Um, the weather is interesting because I think people assume that anytime there's rain or we get to snow season that you automatically hit the under, and, and the answer is no. The wind is what determines that. The wind, because quarterbacks will tell you, they can throw a wet football. They can throw a ball through the snow. I mean, Tom Brady put up that 40 not, 45 right. nothing game in the snow one year against the Titans, I remember, right? Like that, You can score in the snow. It's the wind, right? If it's windy, look at the wind, guys. If it's, if it's 25 miles an hour, 30, 40, those are what affects the games. And there's a game, a Browns game last year with 50-mile-an-hour winds, if, yep. if you remember, like, wind. So do not just auto-wager an under on an NFL or college football game because of "Quote unquote bad weather." Look at the wind report. And, and I again, I, I've always thought that when you have rain, it almost favors the offense more because at least yes. the offense, you know what the route is, you know where you're going, and and the exactly defense right. is the one that has to react, and they're going to be likely the ones to maybe yes. slip or trip or make get a bad cut when they're trying to go somewhere that not expecting. As a offensive lineman, I love when we had bad weather because it made the defensive guys slower. It just did. You know, they, we know where we're going. We know what our footwork's supposed to be. The wide receiver, at your point, knows where he's going. The quarterback, don't. they have to react. When you have to react on a bad turf, now, again, some of these places are artificial turf, so or the field turf, so it's a little bit different. But a grass field, man, favors the offense if, 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 the, if the footing is bad. And uh, let's hope that your picks have some favor this weekend. We had a good weekend last weekend. Let's continue with that. Let's get to Bears picks 
of the week before we get to gambling group chat in a few minutes and also survivor and best bets we're still doing survivor guys we're still doing it we're still fighting it even though it's you know it's gonna be up and down but let's go to your first game here 49ers at the browns browns are getting seven points total 37 and a half that's one of the totals that has sort of rolled down here niners are five and oh we saw them roll the Cowboys and Sunday football. They appear to be the best team in the league. The Browns are off a bye without, most likely, as we we'll record this on Thursday, without Deshaun Watson and Dorian Thompson Robinson's not going to play. They're going with PJ Walker as their quarterback. Browns are two and two. Bear, where are you going here? You have not watched uh, watched the NFL or waged on the NFL very long. You cannot anticipate what's going to happen in this game. Oh, yeah. It's going to be within seven points. You know it's going to be – you're going to turn it on in the fourth quarter, and it's going to be 17-13, and the Browns are going to have a chance. Look, the 49ers are the best team in the league coming off of an absolute beatdown of the Cowboys on, on Sunday night. Brock Purdy has been fantastic. Like you said, probably no Deshaun Watson, shorthanded Browns team. But again, as, be- as good as the 49ers were, this is a team who went on the road last year in a bad weather game in the Midwest and lost to the Bears. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's going to happen. Yeah. The, the Browns defense is still really good. If there is a weakness on the 49ers, it is the offensive line. Uh, so I, I am the fact that PJ Walker is playing, it, it just makes it even more comical and predictable that the that the Browns plus seven are the is the only side I can play. The worst part about the result of this game is we're going to have to hear next week that Brock Purdy is, like, not good anymore, right? Because, right. like, like, this is a, a typical cycle of the NFL, right? You have a young player who is hitting it off, has not lost a, a game as a, as, a, as a starter in the, in, uh, in the regular season, goes to a really good defense in the Browns, just doesn't play as well. Like, it just it happens. Right. Right? Like he's had turnover-worthy plays that aren't turnovers yet. Like, this is the game for that to happen, Right. And then we're going to have discourse next week about, oh, all the takes about him being good. You were wrong, and I'm right. It's going to be just miserable when, when the Browns cover this game. Uh, I don't, do you think the Browns win, or do you think they just cover? I think they cover. Okay. I think they cover. I, I don't, so I don't no know. money line sprinkle. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a money line sprinkle. <laughs> okay. This one's got, I guess, yeah, 20, ugly. 23, 17, yeah. 17, 13 written all over. I love it. it. I think the Browns defense plays well. Let's get to your second game of the week. You have the Seattle Seahawks. They're getting three points. They're plus three at the Cincinnati Bengals. The total is 45 in this game. Seahawks are three and one, and they're off a bye. We know they lost the, the week one to the Rams and played well since then. Uh, the Bengals are two and three. They just beat Arizona. It appears that Joe Burrow was back to his old self against Arizona. Threw for a bunch of yards. Jamar Chase had a bunch of touchdowns. I think he had three of them, almost 200 yards. Where are you going here? I wonder if the, the cooler, damper weather in Ohio will maybe make it a little more difficult for, for Burrow to kind of keep that stre- cap stretched out, yeah. keep, it, keep it keep it warm, and he's able to move around a little bit. So I'll be curious to see about that. But this Seattle offense is, is really good. And uh, I didn't think that Seattle would have a great year this year, but they, they've gotten off to a good start. And even as back as Cincinnati looked last week, defense, I think, still has some issues. And as, as much as the we don't want to say, okay, the Bengals are past it now, the Arizona had that shaky fourth down yeah. call where they ran the, the Dobb sneak and, like, didn't get it. They get that. They get the lead back most likely in the second half, and maybe they do wind up winning that game. So I'm going to take the, 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 the Seattle offense here to, to score some points in Cincinnati, uh, grab the three, and uh, if the Bengals win, so be it. But, but I think Seattle's the right side here. I think that offense is going to, that Bengals defense, but I still think they're having, they're not getting after the quarterback as much as they have in the past. And I still think they're missing those parts in the secondary that they were used to have in the last couple of years. The Bengals are, are just not as good on defense as they've been in the past couple of years. I think all the attention that we focused on Joe Burrow the last couple of weeks has kind of masked their defense just not being as good. Seattle's eighth in DVOA. They're a good, good football team. They're off a of bye. They're well rested. Um, they just play smart football. They play clean football, um, and I think they go to Cincinnati. I, I think they win this game. Honestly, um, it, just the way that the style they play, they match up well with the Bengals. If Burrow is back, truly back, then of course the Bengals' prospects change. 
But I think Seattle just wins this game outright. I, I, the, the the three is what I'm going to play in, in my contest, I believe, and uh, I like it. Let's get your your last game for now. Yeah, Cardinals at the Rams, an NFC West battle. Cardinals are getting seven points. They're plus seven here. Totals 48 and a half. Cardinals are feisty one and four. They've been competitive every game this season, despite the idea they might be taking for Caleb Williams. The Rams are two and two. I played the Eagles close last weekend before losing by nine points. Where are you going here? Well, they, they, have some comp- they might have some competition if they're tanking for Caleb Williams because right now the Bears have picks one and two in the draft. So uh, they, Caleb Williams might not be an option for them. But, but like I said, they, they comp- I had Cincinnati last week in Arizona, and the Cardinals were a play away from, yeah. like I said, getting the lead back. And I, uh, This line has moved way too much. I think this line opened up at like four. Now it's four and a half. Now it's yeah. seven. I, I don't know. People just say, oh, Cooper Cup is back. So now you have Stafford throwing to Cup and Nakua. I still don't trust that offensive line, uh, even against a defense that really doesn't get yeah. a ton of pressure on the quarterback. But, but Arizona's been a frisky dog. The Rams, if they're, they've been a, the Rams have been a frisky dog as well. Like the, those have been the spots where the Rams have either pulled some upsets or hung around yeah. in games. Even last week, they didn't, they, 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 made a respectable showing themselves uh, against the Eagles. But there's a big difference between taking four and a half or whatever with the Rams and laying seven. I can't lay seven. With the Rams. I'm going to, I'm going to take uh, yeah. Arizona and grab some full, the full seven here. I said the Rams are two and two. They're two and three. Um, I dare you. I dare. I, yeah. I made a mistake there. I, I don't want to get called out for it, but nonetheless, the Rams are a team. I can't figure out, man. Like, they beat the Seahawks bad in week one. Yeah. And then they've, you know, they've played these closer games. They lost the Niners by seven, but that was a 10-point game. They kicked right. that late field goal. They, they played close in Cincinnati, but didn't win that game. They played the overtime game in, in Indianapolis, and then they just lost to Philly by nine. And a game that, you know, nine points was, that's about what the, right. the game felt like. Eagles late score there to make it much worse. So if you look at this game and say Arizona's been feisty, man, they have battled in every game. And the Rams, I think, just sort of inconsistent, right? Like the, the Cooper Cup being back looked like it was going to help, but they scored 14 right. points last weekend. So it's a lot of points in the NFL for teams that probably aren't that far apart. I, I, and the rec- two and three and one and four, it's not like they're that far apart. No. So um, I like this wager here. And some more, uh, some more plus, uh, you, get all, you get all underdogs here. It's an underdog Perfect. week. It's a very under a week. And there's only one favorite I and, even look at as I as I like. Maybe. And, and there are those sites out there. I think Bet Labs is one of them. And there might be some other ones and people who track data and mine mine data and like for for money and ticket count. And like they've said that this has been like the biggest public success. Like I, I forget exactly what the like I think I think it was like bet weight teams that have had like 60 percent or better of, yeah. of the of the of the tickets like are hitting at like the highest rate they yeah. have like on and eventually that's gonna yes come back and hopefully this weekend it is with, with a few underdogs here on the slate it's gonna start this week let's recap those wagers very quickly for you browns plus seven home against the niners you have the seahawks plus three at the Bengals and the Cardinals plus seven at the Rams. Make sure to stay tuned. We have our survivor pick and we'll have our best bets in a few minutes. But right now, let's get to the gambling goop chat. It's me, it's the Bear, it's Sam, it's Will Hill. We talk all things NFL, including the market for MVP, what teams were fading, what teams were on. And again, the weird weekend with a bunch of dogs. Here's our conversation. Gambling group chat is back. Myself, Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, Will Hill. And I know we got games all day Sunday, but I know personally, I can't wait for Monday night. Chargers hosting the Cowboys in the you deserve you get. I'm saying it backwards. I'm so excited. I'm saying it backwards. You get whatever you deserve. You deserve whatever you get. Both ways. It, it, it's the, it applies either way. Don't wager on the game. <laughs> Don't wager on the game. Like what are you doing? Because I, I think Sam, we all know how this game goes, right? I want to take a three to one bet that the Chargers will be down three with two minutes to go at their own 20. Like, that's all I want to bet. If we could do that, I would be a very happy person. Like you said, you know what you get. Like, my favorite play of the entire season so far is when Staley had fourth and one at their own 29. Herbert has the hand from Scary Movie 2 all bandaged. <laughs> and they, they like QB dive it when his hand is clearly almost shattered. And they don't get the fourth and one. 
We know, we all know what's going to happen here. The Chargers are going to be down three, two minutes to go. Go ahead, kid. Go win us a football game. I mean, you guys telling uh, the, the audience not to bet on this is really disturbing, unsettling. There are kids listening to the podcast, and you're going to send out that kind of message, don't <laughs> bet on this game? I mean, come on. This is a perfect teaser game. Like we said, Chargers, you tease them up to seven and a half. We know, they're like Sammy said, they're going to be down three with two minutes to go. You might as well just start the game in the fourth quarter with three minutes left. Give the Chargers the ball, put them on their own 18, and we'll just save everybody some time. We'll play like a five-minute game because that's what's going to happen. Uh, Chargers are a good teaser leg, though. That'd be good. I'll be able to actually stay up and watch that entire game on Monday night if they do that. As we yep, get no older, commercial Jeff, breaks. Just oh, in I, and out. I fell right to the middle of the second quarter on Monday night, that Packers, uh, that Packers Raiders game out cold. I didn't watch a second of that. I was like, I was, not, not doing that. I, 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 I was, I didn't watch a second of it. And un, I was watching baseball. And unfortunately I didn't watch a second because in following on, on Twitter and social media and reports and just highlights of the next day, of the brilliance that is Josh McDaniels. I mean, <laughs> however, he is involved in a game this week that I am all in on. I went into the reasons with you, with you, Jeff, earlier. I love the Patriots plus the points this week against the Raiders. And, and, and I have a feeling at least one of the two people, just knowing the way these guys think from all of the, chats that we have and the way these guys operate i know either sammy or will are going to be right right there with me taking team belichick and that horrible offense plus three points sunday in ella in, in in vegas sammy you take it go ahead i know you got it i i mean this is the spot to bet new england everybody knows that right we it, what we have to do is pay attention to the fan base right mac jones needs to be benched bill belichick needs to be fired the team needs to be sold Yet, I would probably still take three here with Belichick against a defense that really, I think when you look at the way the Raiders play defensively, they don't pressure anything. They sort of let, they let you run the ball. They let you get those dink and dunk run throws and play action passes and all that. And it's just a spot where this is the bottom of the barrel for New England. I know that they've been awful the last two games, but I mean, bear the look ahead number here in Vegas in the summer was Vegas pick them. So I'm not laying three with Josh McDaniels against Bill Belichick. I, I don't think I'll bet the Patriots a whole lot more this year, but this is that ultimate plug and play. Take the three here. If you can get a three and a half minus 120, good for you. But I would take a field goal and then maybe not bet the pass the rest of the year. Yeah, Will, I know we were talking earlier in the week, like two weeks ago, I hopped on the, uh, the Pats under seven and a half wins. And I think I know this, this week you grabbed under six and a half too, right? They hung a six and a half for like an hour on Monday, which like you always hear people say, oh, Vegas knows every, everything. Vegas does not know everything. Sometimes, especially these season win totals can be super beatable, super soft. Uh, so look, if if you get to seven wins and you beat me, so be it. I think that's moved down to uh, to five and a half where it should be because it was seven and a half before the season. And what you've seen to only adjust it by a win, I think is, uh, it is not the proper adjustment. As far as this game, no, the answer is no, 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 no. I don't have to bet it. I'm not going to bet it. Watch it. You don't have to bet every game. This is one where you just, man, I, you, you guys can have it. You, you guys can have all you want. You, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you just said you don't have to bet. You were chiding me yes, for telling people right. not to bet on Cowboys chargers. And now you're telling people not to bet on these two fine football teams, the, the, the Belichick coaching tree in Vegas. Shame Things on changed. you. But you you can't bet against the Raiders though in this spot, right? Though, so you can like you justify yes. it that by saying I'm fading Josh McDaniels and a poor Raiders team that can't manage situations against New England. You can you can frame that in your mind that way too. I, I, seriously, how does Josh McDaniels sit there or stand there or whoever is telling him to do whatever he's doing at the end of the game? Gee, we can go for it and end the game here. We can punt it and pin them inside their ten and have them go. However many yards, no timeouts, or what, or we can kick a 52-yard field goal. Let's kick the field goal. Like it's it's like it's like one of those choose your own adventure books that you used to I uh, used to read as a kid, where like if you want to go down this path, you go to page 62. If you want to take the raft, go to page 84. If you want to walk through the jungle, go to page 19. And it's like the worst possible option. That's what Josh McDaniels does every single time. It's amazing. 
And the numbers show you too that going from three to six doesn't increase your win probability no. that much. You so a one possession game so to a one, one possession game. game. So like it doesn't change. Now I guess in that specific instance with Jordan Love not moving the ball, maybe you say, okay, look, we if we go up six, the game is over essentially. But there's obviously many ways the team can score. So it's just he makes the wrong decision every time, which I understand wanting to bet the Patriots here. The Patriots are just. <laughs> They're so, they're just, Sammy came on, I think it was last week or the week before and said you had him 29th or someone you knew had him power rank 29th. I thought about that when they lost the Saints. I was like, yeah, that guy was right. They're the 29th worst team or 29th best team in the NFL. Mac Jones sucks, man. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> crazy out here too. Like, they're like <laughs> Bailey Zappi. And I, I just, I, I don't think that's the move. I think it's clear that. You know, if it was like crystal clear for New England, they would just lose out and take Caleb or Drake May. That would that would fix a lot of things, I think, in the quarterback room. But Mac is just he's not it. I, I call him out here. We do a show every day on Nesson in Boston. I call him Coke Zero because when you have Coke Zero, you're like, OK, that was that was all right. I hope I never have that again. It's he's Coke Zero, a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> give me give me the fully leaded version of coke every single time that's, never, that's great it's pretty good i like oh, it never, it's, mm. it's pretty good for you but you you're not laying three with the raiders though no 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 well what do you like in the nfl being that you don't like the patriots you know i've been down on the Bengals all year before the season the first month and and this is the one thing as a sports better it, it, it's hard to nail down you don't want to overreact but i think you have to react and burrow looked healthy he looked mobile that was really a lot of the handicap is hey he's not healthy but if he's going to be healthy you have to change how you look at Cincy. you would never get them at this low of a number if burrow was healthy um you know this whole season so i think you're getting Cincy cheap here i don't buy the seattle team i don't buy their defense uh, Chase is really just a monster player, obviously, and, and he's right. He is open. He is always open. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears here. I'm, I'm gonna jump on Cincy. I think you guys are opposite here, but I think this is a, a little bit of a discount on the Bengals. Yeah, I, I was on I was on Cincy last week uh, when that number just moved down way way too much, and uh, I was on Cincy. But uh, but I am gonna be I'm gonna be on on Seattle here. I, I just think I worry about the damn cooler weather, you know, in Cincinnati. On Sunday, maybe that causes his calf to tighten up. Maybe he isn't as loose and as mobile as he was last week in Arizona. I think that Seattle offense can score. So I, I actually do like the sea bags here plus the points. We talk a lot about the Bengals' offense. Their defense has not been as good this season either. Like, like that, that, that's been a problem for them. They can't stop anyone like they have the last couple of years. So Seattle's offense off a bye as well. They're a top 10 DVOA team. Like, they're, Seahawks are a good football team this year. I don't think people have kind of caught on to that yet. Yeah, Will, Will, one thing that you were uh, high on a couple of weeks back, and now we've seen a line move where the price that you got back, I think 20 to 1 is what you grabbed, or 25 to 1 is what you grabbed Brock Purdy on. Uh, is MVP. Now we see him as low as seven to one in places. Uh, this, this is an interesting conversation to be had. And I think I know where, where, where will stand. So Sammy, I want to ask you like, how do you think the MVP vote like is going to be a situation where you've got McCaffrey who's scoring a touchdown every single week, clearly is the best player on the 49ers offense. And then you've got Purdy who is an MVP voter. We know the way that these voters think like if he's, 49ers go 14 and three and they're the number one seed in the NFC and have home field like Purdy sitting there and he's got, I don't know, 26 touchdown passes and four interceptions. And maybe he's only averaging 200 and something yards a game. And most of his passes are kind of those short crossing routes or whatever, but he showed Sunday. He can make the throws like as a voter, like are you conflicted or you're voting for the quarterback just because in theory, the quarterback is the most important player we got McCaffrey is probably the best player. It's kind of a, an interesting potential MVP vote if the Niners do keep this up, Purdy or McCaffrey. Yeah, certainly. I think the McCaffrey stuff is certainly real. Um, you know, Purdy's been very good, though, and I love watching Dan Orlovsky break him down. You know, he's throwing guys open, and, like, guys aren't even looking at him when he's making the throws, and he they, they turn and they, they cross, they cut, and the ball is right there waiting for him. He's really been just a great player for that team. Um, let's have this conversation though on October 12th. I don't remember a time in this kid's career where he wasn't talked about to win the MVP. Look at the number on Mahomes right now, guys. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not taking away from what McCaffrey and Purdy have done, but 
Is this the quietest hype it's ever been on a guy who's probably going to go 13 and four, 14 and three again in Kansas City, you know, throw 40 touchdowns or whatever, 4,000 plus yards? Uh, I think this is a good time to maybe buy a little Mahomes stock. I'm not saying that, again, McCaffrey or Purdy aren't worthy, but when when everybody else talks about McCaffrey and Purdy, you should probably look somewhere else. And I, I think that's a good price on Mahomes. He was you know, seven to one before the season. And it's, you know, you can get a better number right now. I just, I think that's sort of really interesting that we're not talking about the best player in the world to win the MVP with still, you know, 12 weeks left to go in the regular season. Yeah, his numbers aren't as good as they've been in the past, but once it clicks, they're still trying to find that wide receiver. We know Kelsey obviously is his number one guy, but some sort of wide receiver to roam the middle of the field. When they find that guy, the offense is going to explode back to what it's been over the years. You're exactly right, Sammy. They're four and one right now as we're recording this, and they haven't played their best ball. Like Mahomes at some point is going to figure it out, and they're going to start playing much better in offense, and they're going to play better against better teams. And you're going to look up in December, they're going to be the number one seed again, and he's going to be the leader of a team that's going to be back in the AFC Championship game. Like you're exactly right about the value in taking him right now. Never go wrong betting Mahomes. I, I want to say one thing about Purdy, though. Can we stop this narrative of, like, anybody could play quarterback? I mean, people act like he's just throwing screen passes all day. He's a good player. He makes incredible throws, incredible decisions. Uh, I, I just think the narrative is so misguided on Purdy just because people were wrong on him in terms of the draft. And, hey, nobody saw this coming with him. Kid's just a hell of a football player. He really is. You're absolutely right. I'm glad you said that because, you know, you everyone has to qualify everything as either the greatest or the worst. There's nothing like in between. Brock Purdy is just good. He is good in this offense, right? What he's asked to do in this offense is complete the ball to the open wide receivers. And sometimes, as Sammy mentioned, throw guys open. He does all of that perfectly, right? Is he is he the, the most talented player of all time? No, but he's, he's, he's asked to do a specific thing in this offense, many things, obviously. He does them very well. Can we just all admit everyone, just like he's good. You, you don't have to say he's the best of all time or he's not as good we think he's just a good quarterback he is a good quarterback in this offense there's a lot of football left this season we'll see how he does but he has yet to lose a football game in the regular season as a starter that has to matter i know quarterback wins is taboo to talk about that you know that sort of thing quarterback wins but guys he has not lost a regular season game as a quarterback the niners have scored over 30 points and i think eight or nine straight regular season games He's a good quarterback. We have to finally admit that and move on. It's not that we're wrong about him. Um, I said that before the season started, I just want to see him play more before I decide. I've seen him play more. Good quarterback. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, look, look, look at around uh, the, 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 the board here while you guys were, were kicking that around. It just seems like a rough week for to really find a lot of things. Atlanta, two and a half against Washington. Uh, Tennessee, Baltimore laying four. In, but that's in London. London. That's not at home. At home, you take Tennessee, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jacksonville, Indy, Car Bears. 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 You, you, you like the Bears plus two and a half? Well, it's more of a. Are we fading the Vikings now? No, Justin Jefferson. They're already talking about Cousins' waivers, no trade clause. Like they're asking him questions about that at press conferences. Like the Vikings feel like they're going to just sleepwalk in, into Chicago, right? The, the, the Bears feel a little bit better about themselves after a win. Bears plus two and a half, no? Any, any takers in this? Great teaser. Like we mentioned the Chargers earlier. If you could tease the Bears up to eight and a half, Chargers plus seven and a half. Again, you sit there and, and these games are coin flips. They're close. It, it comes down to a fumble or a call or a non-call. But if you got the teaser in the eight and a half in your pocket, you feel a lot better. So I think the Bears are a great teaser like. Yeah, without Jefferson, how do you take Minnesota? I mean, this is a this will be a game where Matson will fumble like third quarter. It'll swing the entire game. <laughs> that's what he, uh, that total got blasted too under. I mean, it opened 47 and a half in Vegas, and now we're seeing 44 at South Point, 44 at Circa. Uh, that's like a 2017 final, maybe either way. I, I do agree with Will. I, I sort of like the uh the protection on the teaser with Chicago from two and a half to eight and a half. Uh, let me break some news here, Bear, too. Uh, I know you're a big fan of the bartender who uh, who is very good at being very I, bad. Uh, at the, <laughs> his favorite bet on a Thursday, Friday is uh, Detroit minus three. He doesn't see how Detroit. <laughs> I would. You, 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 I don't, I don't know how you just did. That was like a, a uh, like an Oz Perlman mentalist trick because I'm literally the my the next question out of my mouth was, you know Detroit is going to go to Tampa and lose this week, right? Because it's, it's, it's funny, Will Will had uh, mentioned 
earlier in the week about like the Lions were only 240 or so to, to win the They're division cheap. and like and like how and then they got bigger after the Green Bay loss. Like you beat Green Bay already in Lambeau. You already got a two game lead. Like the Bears stink. The Vikings stink. Like how do the Lions not win that division? You just hit on the game right there. Tampa Bay plus three against Detroit. Now the the, the bartender affirmation. I am I am all in. I might have to add that one to the column before I submit it here. He's like, I don't see how Detroit loses. And I said, well, Detroit's going to lose now. <laughs> no, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stick up for the bartender. The bartender gets a bad name. He's just been, it, it's been a bad run here. It's been bad luck this week. The bartender turns well, it life around. has been I'm a bad run for the bartender. Lions minus three here. Me and the bartender ride it together. Wow. It's bold of you, That's buddy. a good defense. They're That's... good. They're really good on defense. I don't understand the Gibbs pick, the Gibbs usage. I, I don't know if you saw Campbell yesterday. He's like, well, he's a nice change of pace back. You picked the 12th pick in the draft for a change of pace <laughs> running back. I don't get it. Uh, my fantasy team doesn't get it. But that being said, like Laporte is a hell of a player. They've got weapons everywhere. They're legit on defense. I, I actually like Detroit this week. You know, that being said, like he was 0 4 last week, your buddy, the bartender, those who follow Sammy on Twitter know the legend of the bartender. So I guess if he does get one and he goes to 1 and 4 over a five game stamp, that's still pretty bad. So I guess what? The, one game the, winning the, the blind squirrel finds it. The blind squirrel f- finds a nut every now and then. Maybe, maybe he could, but yeah, I, I would I would not be laying three with the Lions now, knowing that the, uh, the, 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 how did they, how did they possibly lose guarantee has been <laughs> summoned by the, uh, by the bartender, Houston looks like kind of a kind of a live uh, a live short dog this week too, don't you think, Sammy? Yeah, I mean the respect is certainly real. I mean, if I would have said before the season, you know, New Orleans would be one and a half in Houston, we'd all be like, wait, what what's going on? Is Derek Carr hurt? Is Alvin Kamara out? Um, you know, did they fire Allen, the head coach? But really, it's just it's the respect for Houston having a quarterback. And I'm I'm not going to sit here. This is not a hot take show to say that Carolina should have taken Bryce Young, but you watch the arm talent there. It's it's certainly something. He's clearly got a better arm than Bryce Young does. And I think the market respects Houston, but really the books respect him too. I mean, to open this thing one, one and a half and, and really not move it off that all week is is very telling for me. Um, you know, I, I have to pick five every week in multiple contests and Houston plus one and a half is is certainly one of the five plays I'm going to make this week. I think it's a great opportunity to fade them after that big win in New England. I mean, I just, it's a great, everyone's talking about how good the offense is now. Remember the (laughs) offense had four touchdowns over four weeks and they obviously played New England and just kind of smashed them. Now they go back on the road. Houston's feisty, man. They're fun to watch. Like they, they play their butts off and Stroud has got something there. I I'm, I'm loving Houston this weekend. Uh, But mostly also fade of the saints after a big win. There are some bad teams out there, and I, and I and I don't have the current updated odds. And everybody, I mean, the, car, the, the Panthers, obviously the last Ooh. team to to win a game. But like, are they going to win a game eventually? Like, are there other teams that might be live here to finish with the with the worst record in the league? You've, you've got the Panthers. The Giants are terrible. Patriots are bad. Bears are bad. Cardinals still only stuck on one wins. But the Broncos. Uh, <laughs> I was that you 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 were I, I was getting to like the 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 denouement the the apex of my soliloquy here like that's what I was gonna say like is are the Broncos like maybe like a an under the radar type team to be really really bad because I think they got the most difficult schedule in the league moving forward don't they? Very tough division. Let yes. me give you a couple. First, I don't want to I don't want to bore y'all with stats, but week two the Broncos Please gave do. up eighty seven and two touchdowns to Brian Robinson. Week three. Uh, against the Dolphins, 285 rushing yards, five touchdowns. Khalil Herbert doesn't run the ball this year in Chicago, 103 yards against Denver. And then last week, Brees Hall had 177 and one touchdown. The crazy part is Denver's actually worse against the pass, but they're getting carved on the ground. I mean, they they can't stop anybody, man. They're giving up 32 points a game and at 8-9-1 to one to have the worst record. I, I don't think that's a bad bet. Now, is it going to happen? Obviously, eight nine to one says it's not, but I sort of like eight nine to one rather than bet Carolina three to one. Can you imagine the embarrassment of paying a quarterback all this money to finish with the worst record in the National Football League? Like that—that that goes one of the worst trades in NFL history. 
But that that you that's not you can't if you're Denver that's not that's not acceptable. Like you can't be. He this actually bad. he actually hasn't been statistically but he, terrible, sure, but he's the but le- he's the leader of your friend. He's the leader of the team, and in these big moments, he fumbles the ball back to the Jets at home, and they scoop you know they scoop and score. Like he has not risen up in the end of game moments this season, and that's what you pay him to do. It's not good. No, I, I mean, maybe maybe just give a couple more draft picks to hire Sean Payton. Sean Payton is there. <laughs> Coach, How about Minnesota that's... twenty-six to one if they trade Cousins? Can Minnesota get low enough if they find a taker for Cousins? Whether it's the Jets, whether it's the Falcons, I don't know if there's a huge market for them. But hey, maybe you come up with a little bit of a back injury for Cousins if you're Minnesota because they've been spinning their wheels so long <laughs> with Cousins, where they're just they're always in that you know there's no eight and eight teams anymore. But Cousins is Mister Eight and Eight, and it, finally maybe you just bottom out and, and see if you know what trade some pieces, come up with an injury or a trade with for Cousins and get to the bottom at twenty-six to one. Maybe Minnesota can get there. I don't I don't know. I don't think that's a terrible bet, though. Okay, okay. You you meant you mentioned that, and we, we 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 talk more about gambling than anything else in this on this show. And I'm looking through this like, who would potentially be a trade partner with Minnesota for Cousins? I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to Jeff here because I think he's this is more his. I mean, it would it would have to be the teams I think we'll mention like Atlanta possibly. Right. But they're winning enough games with, with Ritter. It is not because of Ritter, but they're winning the games, right? Like if they beat the commanders this weekend, they're four and two now, right? They're not, they're probably not trading for cousins. If they keep winning with the quarterback they have the me, everyone says the jets, but why would the jets do this? Like you're going to have a high price quarterback in cousins and also have Rogers on the roster for next season. Like it doesn't make sense to me. To me, the Vikings, what, what whoever said, I think it was Sammy said the back injury for cousins. Like at, at some point you just say, look, man, the season did not work out. They want a new quarterback. What better way to get a new quarterback than draft a quarterback in the best quarterback draft we've seen in in years, right? I mean, so at some point, I think they just sort of shut Cousins down, and I don't know how they do that. Jefferson, I mean, it's a hamstring injury for a wide receiver. He's probably not back in four weeks. No. So you just find yeah. a way to just kind of shut him down, and you just sort of officially tank, essentially, for the rest of the season. If you lose the Bears this weekend, I mean, what are we doing, Minnesota? You have a worse record than the Bears if you lose this weekend to them. Like, I think at some point they're going to say, look, man, it just didn't work this year. It was a bad year. We had all kind of that luck last season. Let's move forward to a different quarterback next year. His contract is up at the end of the year, too. So it isn't a cleaner break in terms of a trade or if somebody wants to trade for him. Like, if you're the Jets, hey, we rent Cousins and then we move on. But I agree there's not, like, some robust market for Cousins unless, like, would the Pats jump in? Probably not. It's not easy, really. But the... The, the Jets offensive line right now has a bunch of injuries. Are they really training for Cousins? Like, are you going to do that right. with your your best offensive lineman now out for the season, your other, your your left tackle on injured reserve? Like, to me, the Jets don't make sense because you're putting him in a, in a situation to fail. Like, again, with the pieces around him and the offensive line, like, it's just not going to work well. I would not trade any assets for Cousins. Look, the Jets are in a bad situation. It sucks where they're at, but you just have to live with it. You, Rogers got hurt. You put all your eggs in that basket, and he got hurt, and that's just your season. Your season's going to stink because of it. Agreed. Sammy, any other uh, any other plays on your mind for the week? Yeah, I, I sort of think Indianapolis is going to shape up to be a public dog, and, and that's not strictly why I'm betting against them. But I, I like the number on Jacksonville. I think it was Jeff who said a couple of weeks ago on the show how, how unlucky Jacksonville had been in terms of dropping balls. I mean, Lawrence is throwing darts. Lawrence also misses a lot of home run throws, but Lawrence is a pretty good quarterback. And obviously they, they went into London and beat Buffalo as a five and a half point dog. I feel like the Indianapolis machine is going to sort of blow a tire this week. No, Anthony Richardson It's going to be Gardner Minshew against his former team. And I think Jacksonville minus four at home is a pretty decent buy low on a team. That's really getting better every week. Their passing game has looked really well. And uh, Indianapolis, no, no stranger to big plays in the secondary. So I think that home team there, minus four, is a is a pretty good bet. Two sixty four, Jacksonville. Will and any other uh, NFL thoughts on your mind here? The word of caution with that Jacksonville, and and I was looking at too because man, it just looks it, it jumps off the page. It looks so cheap. Jacksonville's basically been in London since like July, and and now they come back. They don't have a week <laughs> off. Um, you know that that's a tough travel spot. And remember, that's a big win against Buffalo. I I, I don't know. That just the, the spot is very tricky for me in terms of Jacksonville. But uh, no, like you guys said, it's an ugly week. It, it really it's a tough week. So tread carefully. Um, and, and no, I mean look. It, 
the Giants Bills is that enough points? Can you make that line high enough? I know people that's a Sunday night game, so people that might have had a bad day are going to be chase, chase, chasing with the uh, with the again. Bills on Sunday night. They might do it though. I mean, they, they that, that might be. In, uh, I know they put them like we just get rid of this team. My goodness, we don't need to see the Giants in prime time anymore, please. You can't. You probably can't put that spread high enough, and you probably can't put Carolina Miami high enough. With it, either. If there's a number for sacks, I don't think they. It's. I think it's sometimes they, they have a market for like team sacks for a game. Yeah. The Bills lead the NFL in sacks right now. The Giants. I think Jones has been sacked what thirty times the last three weeks. I know Tyrod Taylor is going to probably get the start. Andrew Thomas is not playing. The center is not back. Like that's maybe the way to play this game is just play the Bills defense to just hit whoever plays quarterback for the Giants. Now Tyrod's tougher to bring down. We saw uh, against uh, the the Dolphins, they got home a bunch. Won't able to bring them down. Maybe that's the play in this game. Um, but you can't do anything with this game. And, like. and you you wouldn't think that this would be the week with with Jones and Milano and Trey White being out that all those injuries would kind of manifest and give the. The, the Bills an issue against the but the the Giants don't the Giants don't have dudes like oh. like like when like, like you have a stuttering offense like they do sometimes you just want to throw the ball up to a wide receiver I played this in 2010 our offense in Carolina averaged 12 points a game 12 points good. a game I love that we team. Jimmy Clausen's quarterback is not is, is not his fault <laughs> I'm sure you that's did. probably what I was gonna say that's probably the only person ever who's muttered I love that team it's it's Brian I do not love that Pierre, team. I shout out that season. <laughs> Yes, against the against the Ravens. He started, he came in yeah. Tuesday and started for us on Sunday. We lost that game in <laughs> back-to-back pick sixes he threw. One, one to Ray Lewis and one to Ed Reed. So there we go. Brian St. Pierre. We did not cover that game, by the way, Will. Um, so nonetheless, we have us 12 points a game. But we have Steve Smith. Like we could still be like throw the ball to Steve Smith, right? Like, like make a play for us. The Giants don't have that guy. They don't have a guy like just go throw the ball to someone. So like they're not gonna do anything against Buffalo. They don't have anyone to do that with. Tell me Steve Smith was a great dude because uh, li lie to me and tell him tell me he was a great dude, even if he wasn't a great dude. Because I loved watching him play. He was a lot of fun to 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 watch play. He is a great competitor. Um, he gets a little ornery when we average 12 points a game on offense. I'll tell you that. So um, yeah, it was not the, the most fun season. And, and it's a wild year when you have Pro Bowl running backs, Pro Bowl left tackle, Pro Bowl center, and you average 12 points a game. Problem. Yeah. Coaching staff. Yeah, Hall of Fame wide receiver. Coaching yeah. staff replaced? Uh, yes. I would think yeah. so. Yeah. We're not going to replace any of you guys. We'll all be back next week. Samuel, Jeff, Gambling Group Chat. Until next week. I could really just sit and talk with those guys for like like an hour and, just, and, and kick whatever around and bust each other's chops. And that's why we text each other during the week because we get to enjoy all of that good fun stuff. My favorite thing of our text message chain is when Sammy does the official like numbers of the game. So the games obviously get numbered the rotation and the rotation exactly. numbers and they get numbered each week. So he's, he'll just, and he won't say like UFC. He'll be like game 399 UFC. That's yep. my favorite thing. Yeah, we really like, or UCF. And, 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 then, um, and then I'm in another one with Will and, uh, Gil Alexander, Steve Fezzik, and Todd Wishnev. I'm in a, a check change. That's a them. that's a special text thread right there. I, I, you've got you've got to pay for su subscription service for that. Yeah, one. yeah. You're, you're not you're not just getting in that one. And, and Fez like needs like everything like spelled out. Spell it out for me like I'm a third grader. Basically, is how you really like way way the like the, the, like what the what what the bet is. Like Juan Soto Padres over a half a home run plus. Nine. Well, he needs it all written out. Spell it all out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then Todd's just firing on college basketball. And like then Todd, and, then, and then Todd literally, it's like on a college football Saturday or an NFL Sunday. It, 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 it's just Niners, Niners over Niners Browns over forty seven and a half. That that's it. Like it, it, that's all you get. Just again, you get like we a should, million. We should, of them. we should sell some subscriptions to this. The, 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 no, couldn't do not, that. not worth it. Not worth it. All right, let's get to a survivor pick uh, for this week. Bear. Not a lot of what carnage last week. What? Not a lot of carnage last week. All those favorites winning. Yeah, I took Jacksonville last. I think we just had yeah, on we Jacksonville did, we did last talk week. About yeah, that, and that was a good one. Yeah, and that's kind of or the took the or took the Lions last week. One of them. I'm Lions, still Lions were the most obvious pick. Yeah. No, we took Jacksonville two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I took, uh, took and, lines, and, yeah. and if you didn't listen to our advice last week, I think Jacksonville might be the team that I land on this week. You got the Colts with Minshew coming in. I know you've got some travel coming back from London, like Will had said, with, with the with the Jags. They've been there since summer. But it looks like Jack, you, you look at the future as well. There really isn't a lot of future value left uh, with the Jaguars. If you don't use them now, 
maybe you won't use them the rest of the way. So yeah. I, I think you don't need me or you to tell anybody if you have the Dolphins available, I do. you have the Bills available, and you just want to survive, get through it and, and use one of those. But if you've used them already or you know that you can kind of use the Dolphins or the Bills or the 49ers yeah. any week and you want to save a team like that later on, then maybe you look somewhere else because it, it, it's like I'm actually in one. I'm left in one that I'm partnered with somebody, not the circle one. I'm out. But we actually need to use two picks this week. Can I interest you in Houston? Go ahead. Sell me. I mean, I just don't like this. I don't think the Saints are very good. I mean, they won New England last weekend. New England is a dumpster fire. They're on the road now after back-to-back road games against a Houston team that um, – has pieces there. Like I like what, what Stroud is doing. They obviously didn't win in Atlanta last weekend, but I feel like if you're, if you're trying to go off the beam path here, that feels like a spot where they're short home favorite, excuse me, home dog is Houston. And you kind of, I think, catch the saints feeling really high about themselves. And again, the saints had not played well against new, until new England game, no. especially offensively and new England's terrible. Like they lost 38 to three and then 34, nothing like that might just be a game you throw out. And you just say, look at the game for this. I like know, that. This, is, that, is, that, is there a spot for Houston here? I like that. You, you're, you're, you're talking my life. You're, you're tugging at my heartstrings there. I feel like, like this is a weekend with with all the dogs where it feels like there's going to be a couple that went out, right? Yes, I agree. And do you just do you take Tampa Bay at home against the Lions? Do you? That one feels a little tough to stomach. As Sammy and I were talking about, like, yeah, do, yeah, do you take do you take Houston in this situation? Bartender approved. Um, like 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 you, you know you don't want to burn the Niners on a road game, no. cross country, bad I, weather. And I'd even be I was just given the case for the for the Cardinals. Like I would even be a little concerned about trying to say the Rams are going to win outright. Yes. I know there are people out there that like the Rams, but I don't know. I. I could very easily see Arizona win that game. I knew there are people out there that have the, the season mapped out just going anti-Arizona all year, but I don't know. I'd be careful there. You're, I, I, I like your Houston play. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good because the, yeah, the, the Saints are It just feels like a good spot. Yeah, exactly. For it's, like the, it's, the, it's the NFL. You know what you're getting every week with the NFL. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I, 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 might go, I might go Houston. What do you think? What are you going to do? Who are your two teams you're looking at for your your pool? We're going to use the Dolphins. Yeah. And we're going to use Jacksonville. Yeah. I guess the the person that I'm sharing this entry with is a very, very conservative guy when it comes to picking teams. And every week I'm like, you might want to consider. You might want to consider. You might want to. Because at some point, we're we're going to have to do that. Yes. Oh, we just need to survive. Like, yeah, but. So. Yeah, I think we're going to have Miami and Jacksonville. If I, can, if I can get Houston this week and they win, I still, I still have eagle. I will still have the Eagles, the Dolphins, the Niners to use. That's massive, and, and the Chiefs. That's massive game theory. That's right. That, that's the way to do it. Yeah, I'm not in the circuit contest, obviously. Right, but I'm on one of the apps, and you can just re up to. <laughs> but I'm still I'm alive. <laughs> I'm curious to see what Todd Wright will think about that. Todd uh, Wright, who does a uh, Survivor podcast as well, he texted me. Uh, after last week, who I know, who I've known for, yeah. represents Miami. Yeah, I'm curious what he says and, and, and about he, that. And he was like, "I like it." And unfortunately, the Broncos were a terrible pick. They blew that game. Yeah. So, but but he liked the he liked the theory of it. So I wonder if uh, I wonder if Todd will be on the. Uh, I wonder if he'll agree I, with the Houston. I, I like the Houston one. The Broncos, man, are, they are just a complete dumpster fire, buddy. Yeah, yeah, they 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 are they are in the never wager on against uh, list. Other than find that price to get worst team in the league. Which record in the league that might be worth a? Uh, it just feels like we're gonna have like a Sean Payne like just press conference where he just loses his his mind. Oh, it's like it's, it's coming. coming. It's coming soon. They just released, or they're gonna release Frank Clark, so he's out. Randy Gregory's out. Like they have no one to rush the passer. The Russell that, Wilson that, that, thing, that'll go well tonight, right? Yeah, that that, that that is not okay. Well, tonight's game. Yeah, obviously we're we're taping on Thursday. Sorry, yeah. Chiefs, uh, Chiefs. Gain, gaining tonight. when we're timing it. Um, but uh, yeah, I I uh, I think the Chiefs will win that one. Uh, I'm not gonna put that in my survivor pick, but look, nonetheless, look, seriously, look look at the they got the Packers next week. Broncos, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Chiefs, Bills, Vikings, and Brant. Yeah, they'll they'll win a couple of games, I think, but they are. But they, basically, you look at the like, at the at the records for these teams, and I think there's a couple teams to wager on in the market for unders right now. You you have to say okay, it, like the like the Patriots. I think we talked about in the group chat. I think I it's I saw six and a half. Like they have one win now. There's six games that are 50-50 for them. 
So if they split the 50-50 games, they're at four wins. Now you need to get two upsets, basically, to get to six wins. Like, had, e- like, like even if you played under five and a half, I feel like it's not a bad wager. I had gone back with Will when he had told me about that and said, do you wait and do you roll the dice and hope that they win against the Raiders. this against the Raiders this week? And then maybe you get a better number next week and then go under. And he's like, no, I'm not getting cute. I'm just, if they get, if they get this seven to beat me, fine. I think there's a Patriots Broncos game late in the season that that's, I think, like going to make in Denver. Chris, my, my, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. The, the, the Christmas Eve gift that keeps on giving. Night game, New England at Denver. Wow. Whew. Sit around the, sit around the Christmas tree and I love it. Have, get, grab some hot oh, cocoa, I, un, 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 unwrap the gift on Christmas Eve. I'll watch every second of it, buddy. Oh, I will too. My, I'll be in a freaking shoulder sling. I'm have to shoulder sit, sitting, yeah. sitting in my uh, recliner with my arm. <laughs> Molly, go get me. Molly, go get me. Molly, I'm, I'm gonna milk it for all it's worth. <laughs> hey, she had, three, she's had, she's had three ankle surgeries on my watch that, I, that I, I've had to treat her for. I've so. had six on my wife's watch. I, I don't think that would work for me if I got another surgery. I think no, she would, probably not. I, she would probably just find someone else to help me out. All right, let's get to your three wagers so far before we get to our uh, best bets. Uh, you have the Browns getting seven points at home against the 49ers. Seahawks plus three at the Bengals. And you have the Cardinals plus seven at the Rams. All right, Bear, what is your best bet of the NFL weekend? And I know what it is, and it's very gross, but go ahead and do that. I can't wait. I can't wait to get all the the, the the Twitter responses about how everybody hates my picks this week. That's going to make me feel so confident about it. it's going to be a good week. I grabbed the three in New England. I had to. I mean, Josh McDaniels, they, they the Raiders are winning games in spite of his yeah. idiotic decisions. The, the Raiders offense is terrible. What's the biggest Achilles heel for the Patriots? Their offense. This is going to be a close, low scoring, tight, likely one possession game. Look, I know New England's been outscored 72 3 in the last couple of weeks. Raiders haven't scored more than 20 points all year. The under has gotten hit in this game. Patriots couldn't have looked any worse the last couple of weeks. Fire Belichick. Mac Jones is stinks. But yeah. it's Raiders, Raiders. See, look, we were talking about with Sammy P a little while ago. Other than Crosby, nobody's getting after right. him. The, 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 Crosby's Mac awesome, Jones. too. He is awesome. I love watching he, him play he, football. He deserves a, a better faith in to be done yeah. that, that terrible demon. So, yeah, give me, give me New England. There's no home field advantage for the Raiders. So, give me New England plus three. I've been on New England this year against the Saints. It didn't against go Against well. the Eagles and Dolphins. Um, Eagles went well, right? They no, covered. It, was, it was four and a half. Clo- oh. Yeah, it was four and a half. Um Lost by five. And, I, of course, the Dolphins beat them two by seven, I think. So, I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to stay off of the Patriots for now because, jeez. Uh, I mean, you're right about the Raiders, though. Yikes. I mean, like, McDaniels. It, it, did you see this week um, Lincoln Riley, the USC coach, was asked about the NFL? Mm-hmm. And he kind of was like, he didn't say no. Right. I, I There is, a, I think, a situation where Mark Davis calls Lincoln Riley after the season. Yeah. I, like, uh, how, why? How? Why would you or want Mike to McCar- or, or anybody, Jones or anybody. Jerry Jones call like, so like someone, some big owner says, we're going to take a swing for Lincoln Riley. Why, and getting back, why, how can you like look and be like, Josh McDaniel, that's my guy. That's, that's, the, that's the coach that's going to lead us to the playoffs. And mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't know if you Mark Davis about that. He's a great play caller, but. Yeah. But with Tom Brady, he was, right? Like that, and Tom Brady obviously is not there anymore. So, But yeah, I get I know we're cross pollinating yeah. NFL and college, but well, the NFL topic. I, 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 I the, the Lincoln stuff I think is something to watch because I just does he bring Alex Grinch with him though? Well, that <laughs> you know, that would be the deal breaker if he says that. I, I, I get the sense that there's just something there where he, he, yeah, he didn't say I, no. I, he said he mentioned like the schedule was good, so like that, that's the thing to look at. I think is like who has you a don't fr- have to recruit. Yeah, worry like, about NAL money if it's, if it's not the bears with the first pick and they have both obviously the Panthers pick too. Like if it's like the Patriots or someone like, is there a Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams package that happens at some point in, the, in, in with the, the other, the bears would be the interesting. Yeah. One as well. Yeah. With a, with a, with he's, a, there's no way he's coming back. No chance. But you know, is Riley, does Riley want to go to the bears? Is that a Harbaugh place to go to this? These discussions we could have down the road as well. Here, it, it, it's interesting because someone was talking to someone about the bears and uh, and Harbaugh uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it is an interesting 
just Kevin Warren, who used to be yeah. the commissioner of the Big Ten. With, with the Bears. The Bears. Yes. So that would be an interesting connection tie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever their relationship may have been. If, was it good? Was it strong? Who knows? Yeah. That, that would be yeah. something to look at. All right. My best bet, I'm going to Buffalo. I have Buffalo's team total, the points they score over 28 and a half. How do they? Um, they're playing the Giants this weekend. They're 14 point favorites. Um, they didn't play well in London last weekend until kind of the fourth quarter. They kind of woke we up. Like a weird, ga- like, a weird game. Like, like even Josh Allen kind of said it to his kind of yes. slow motion warrant. And again, I think the fact that they went to London later in the week yes. has something to do with that. And Jackson was there all week. Um, the last three years after a loss, they averaged 31 points a game. And they score a ton of points at home. Like Josh Allen's just more comfortable at home. The Giants defense, they, they supposedly have some game records on the defensive line. Where are they at? Like, oh. like Lawrence, I guess, I guess is supposed to be. The, he hasn't shown up on the film. The Giants just can't stop anybody. It's one of those games where Buffalo comes back from London. They're very angry about their performance. Now people are talking about them as sort of that second tier in the AFC conference. They've already put up, what, 38, 37, 48 this year. I and they just they score in the forties against the Giants. Yeah, and and obviously with the, the defensive injuries that they have, they might have to score a lot. They're probably going to have to score, and like I said, that those, those injuries aren't going to cause them to lose this game. But yeah, as the year goes on, you might be seeing them. Score. Yeah, the, Buff- the Buffalo team total over might be a play yes. to continue watching throughout yes. the year because of the, the way these games are going to go. So I have Buffalo scoring a lot of points this weekend in Orchard Park against the Giants. All right, before we get out of here, I want, want to remind you about the Fox Super 6 game. It's not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for week six. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. I'll have a, a column up probably by, uh, maybe by the time this pod is actually up on Friday. Yeah. Giving you my, uh, my thoughts on the Super 6 questions. That's how you make the big money, buddy. Oh, yeah. The, the, we get three, yeah, three, three columns a week, two pods, and that little big noon show on, on Saturday. Just a little big noon show. It's, it's going fun. well. It's been a fun, it's fun to watch. It has, it has been. It, it, it's been, you, you never quite know what to expect when you're walking into a new show for the first time, but the group has been been awesome, and hopefully we're, we're getting some thoughts out there. And it's fun to watch. It's entertaining. It's, and re- really looking forward to getting to uh, – to, to South Bend this week, Notre Dame. You have Matt and Brady back in their element at the side right. of the yeah, game yeah, where the they push, had that, push. the great push push yeah. game, and hopefully the weather will cooperate. And so it's, it's a big step for the show to have now gotten to uh, two games this year that were not like the noon Fox game or on Fox. Uh, obviously, the Colorado Colorado State game earlier this year, and then the uh, the Notre Dame USC game on Saturday. So love it. Show show is uh, show is on the upswing. Good should, should be a, fun to uh, watch. But that's enough about college. Eh? I think we kind of covered everything, right? Yeah, and then I felt again. It's one of those weeks where you just you hold your nose, man. I can't hold wait. I can't wait for next week. I cannot because something is going to happen in that Cowboys Chargers game, oh, it's and, be, it's and it's going glorious. to be awesome. And it's, it's going to be, be terrific. And either and some of the the talk shows on Tuesday morning will have Mike McCarthy or Brandon Staley fired uh, by later that afternoon. It, it's going it. to be terrific. But it's going to be one of those weeks in the NFL. Tread carefully. Hopefully, we gave you some winning advice for for Jeff, for Will Hill, for Sammy P. Uh, I'm the Bear. Thanks again. Listen, listening, subscribe, download, check out us out on YouTube wherever you consume all of your your podcast information. I am the Bear. Have a great week, and remember, as you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>